Good morning guys, welcome back to another episode of Bearham Engines. Remember, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Let's get just over that 40,000 subscribers um, and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified whenever we do a video. Cheers guys. So this is the V8 Rover block. You can see we've bored it, showed you that before. Obviously it's all been vapor blasted, looking like brand new. Um, and we have faced the tops here. Now, bear in mind before the YouTube channel really, um, we have never had a jig for one of these V8s or any V8 to be honest, because we didn't really do that many of them. There was an engineering shop down the road that used to do a similar sort of thing to us and they had the jigs for these. So we used to borrow them off them. Um, but now we seem to always have a V8 of some kind. We seem to be doing these Rovers um, quite a bit now. So what we've done is we've took another Rover block that we've got, an old one, and we've also took a, um, a Chevy V8, which is a 45 degree angle. And Tom Upton is gonna make up um, laser cut a, a jig so we can bore and face these V8s um, going off the jig. Now I've said to him, it needs to obviously fit if we can, we need it to, to fit this one, um, the Chevys. Um, so what he's gonna do is he's gonna make a, a base plate really with a sort of locator that locates into these mains and puts the support inside the mains as opposed to the bolts. And then obviously it's gonna have to be like a 45 degree or a 90 degree angle. So you can sit it on one side to do this face and the other side to do the other face. And I've said to him, it needs to end up no more than 16 inches from the base to the top. The reason for that is obviously with this machine, when we face the top, we have got about 16 and a half inches from the table to the cutter. So that's the reason for that. So what he'll do is he'll laser cut the base plate. He'll probably weld on the 90 degree um, legs near enough, pretty, you know, pretty good. And then what we'll do is we'll get a Rover block, stick it on the face on the bed and then machine over the back of the jig slightly till we get our 16 inches. And obviously that is gonna assure that the, the leg, the feet are parallel to the head faces. So yeah, really looking forward to getting that guy. Should have done it ages ago. Um, but as I say, we didn't really have that many of them, but we do seem to be having them coming in at a steady trickle now. The S54 BMW block. Um, now, while we were over at Dave Asprey's at Asprey Motor Works the other day, um, we were chatting about this engine and this engine belongs to Tom, our customer. Now this is the one that did the bearings and what have you and, and the two centre pistons looked like they had detonation. Um, it was an engine that we built well, probably about a year ago or so, a bit more than that I'd say. Um, and he sort of did his first track day. It fetched good power on the rolling road, about 380 horsepower but then it let go sort of towards the end of the day and it looked like it had been detonating. Now, although Tom's a good, cust um, a good customer of ours, he's also a friend of mine and he's a friend of Dave Asprey's as well. So to help Tom out, it was one of those situations where it obviously had been detonating, whether it was a mapping issue, um, it's one of those you'd never really get to the bottom of really, but um, I helped him out, sort of call it sponsorship for his lad doing the, the bike racing, but I bought him some new bits. Um, we come to a bit of a deal. Dave's gonna put the engine together, um, but all I'm doing is just making sure that the, the new piston heights are correct to the face of the block. Obviously all your bearing clearances are, are good. We've sorted the crank out, and I'm just basically building him a, a sort of basic short motor, and then Dave's gonna put all the rest together. Uh, which I'm more than happy with because I'm pretty busy, to be honest with you. So what we've done at the moment, we've done our bearing clearances. We've got just over, very slightly over 2,000 on the mains, which is absolutely perfect. We've got the ACL competition bearing in there. 18 and a half foot pound of torque and then 50 degrees. So we've done that. As you can see, it turns absolutely lovely. You can turn it with two fingers, no problems. So more than happy with that. Now what we're going to do, we have got Bridgeway Com rods. These are the H section rods made by BW Bridgeway. We've used these now in quite a lot of engines. They're our new rod that we use and they are extremely good quality and very, very cheap. Don't be put off by the, the price of them. They are a really, really good quality rod. Um, we obviously, whatever rods we buy, whether they're new 
or we get second hand, we always measure the housings and these are absolutely bang on. We've just done packing them now. We're gonna do the, put them together with the new bearings that we've got down there. We're gonna obviously measure the bearing clearance um, by going off the, the journal size, which is a bottom limit there. We should end up with about 2,000 running clearance on these, but obviously we'll do a dummy build. We've got the Marlin Motorsport pistons there, which we're gonna do a dummy build on. Um, we're just gonna put these together loosely um, put them in the in the blocks and make sure the ring gaps are right. But yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment, guys. So what has Paul been up to with the Rover V8? We've got the pistons here, um, and what Paul is doing before we send the crank assembly off to be balanced at CTM, because obviously we can't do the V8s at the moment, what he's doing is he's weighing and balancing all the pistons. He's done the com rods, he's checked the sizes, he's weighed all those, got them all perfect. Now we're doing the pistons. Um, these range, he said, from the lightest to the heaviest, about seven grams. Um, so what he's doing, as you can see, this is obviously one of the heavy ones. He's removed material around here with the die grinder and obviously put them in the lathe and just turned a bit out the base. Um, and he's managed to get them all pretty much cock on. So what we'll do now is we'll gather up. We've got to order a clutch. And once the clutch arrives, we face the flywheel, got the front pulley, etc. everything in line. We will send off all that with one piston, set of rings, gudgeon pin, circlips, com rod, bearings, uh, rod bolts, just one piston, a complete piston assembly, um, so they know what the balance is, but it is important to get all these weighed before we do that. So guys, dummy build done on the M3 S54. Uh, so we've got the crank in, the piston jut out, we need to remove 10 foul off the crown of these pistons. So that is what we are doing now, guys, as you can see. There is, um, the way we set it up is two pins, one in either side. Don't need to put excess pressure on those pins, just enough to literally clamp it, obviously. And, um, just taking 10 mil, uh, sorry, 10 thou off the outside of these pistons to give us that correct jut out from piston to block face. So we do all six like this, guys, give it another dummy build. Um, so when I do a dummy build, what I do is I put a piston loosely on the com rod without the rings, obviously bearings in, do it dry. And there we go now, you can see just clean, we've got to clean the outside of these, um, outside of this piston here, get the burrs off there. That hopefully should be the correct jut out now. Right guys, thumbnail and title. So you're probably wondering what this is about. Um, and it's actually about this Mercedes. Um, so on first inspection with this Mercedes, obviously we had a look at it visually. John's measured the crank, had a look at that. Uh, crank seems to be absolutely fine. Doesn't even need a grind, to be honest with you. Um, the block, visually, if you sort of have a look at the block, it looks absolutely fine. It looks like there's a, um, a sort of bit of a dark area up here that's usual above the top ring where obviously carbon builds up and oil stain in there looks absolutely fine. But <laughs> on these bores, all of these are fairly bad. Weirdly, on number two, and number five, um, we have actually underneath there, if you measure this from probably about there upwards, we have 30 thou of wear. So the most wear I've ever seen on a block in here was on a Cosworth and it was about 10 thou ball wear, um, which for all you metric heads is about 0.25. Now, what that means is 0.25 is quarter of a mil. Um, that is a lot and you can buy 0.25 pistons a lot of the time and basically wouldn't clean at that. But this is 30,000, this is three quarters of a mil wear under there. Um, so I don't quite know how that's happened. Um, it's just a major tape of going up to there. So we have ordered, the only thing you can get for this is plus 40s. So hopefully it cleans at that. What I'm gonna to have to do is set the cat's paws on the boring bar right underneath the wear ridge um, so it sort of evens itself out and then bore it to plus 40 and it should clean at that. But um, yeah, never seen that before, guys. Massive wear. Um, and why that has happened, I 
I don't really know. It's strange, the pistons look okay, wherever they are. The pistons look all right, and the, the ring lands at the top uh, are not too bad. You know, the, 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 the groove in the top of the piston isn't too bad. Usually, if you get real bad excessive wear like that, you find that the ring lands wear badly, and you get the top ring, and it sort of wobbles up and down the piston, which means, you know, they're, they're knackered. And what that tends to do is, obviously, when the piston gets to the top of the bore, the ring wears into the bore and it's, it's sort of trying to push it over and that's what gives you that lip at the top. But these pistons seem to be all right, so don't quite know what's caused that. But yeah, 30 thou, three quarters of a mil, massive amount of wear and it's the most we've ever seen. So guys, the S54, you can see now we've got the crank in. Most of the rods, only one rod to go in. Um, we've yet to torque these big ends up. Um, they're all greased up, ready to torque up. You can. You can see it still sort of turns absolutely fine by hand. Obviously, we've got to torque it up. So what we do when we're putting these pistons and rods in, we put the, the journal that we're doing up to the top on TDC. You can see there, all the pistons are in. Looking absolutely bloody lovely. If you're into that sort of thing, you can see there the journals at the top. Then what we're going to do, we're going to go over and put the piston on the rod. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And also the rings on the piston. So I'm sure I've seen you, showed you this before. But what you've got here, you've got, you see the packet comes one, two, three. One being the top ring, which is the fire ring. Two is the scraper ring. Um, and then three is the all control ring. So the all control ring, you've got this part, which is the inner part. And then you've got the two outer parts of it which do the job so this this bit here pushes these two outer rings back and controls the oil that's why it's called the oil control ring and it stops the engine from burning oil or smoking so if any oil escapes this then this second ring sort of partly does a compression and partly um, scrapes the oil back down back down to, um, the bore rather than it staying up the top of the bore and burning on the fire stroke. So what we do first of all, you've got to make sure you get this centre part in first. What we do is we put that one on, it's going to be a bit difficult one-handed and then you see where it joins together, it joins together down here, you've got to make sure that that does not overlap. Then these, these can go either way up. Okay, so what we do, say if the join on the, on the centre bit is here, then these joins go probably about, about 120 degrees out from each other. So I'll just get this one on. So now you can see the join is, the join is there, and then the join on that top ring is over there, up the top. Now that, the other half, goes on the bottom and we want to be doing that about 120 degrees so the gaps over here are not in line. So now we've got the, the top ring there, the joint is over there and around the other side you've got the bottom joint. Now we want to put the second ring on so usually depending on which way the ring goes up on the scraper ring which is the second ring if you have a look down the cross section on the inside you've got like a groove um, and that groove usually goes down to the bottom and if I'm right then it has got marks a marking if not the marking saying top which it has there you can see we just out of focus that goes up the top so we put that one on next so you can see that second rings on there now and obviously the top ring goes just above that and you want to be doing the same with the gap put the gap sort of over the other side probably about 120 degrees out the way of the second ring gap and the same with this one, although this one is going to be a square cross plane, there's going to be a mark on the top, usually saying top or a specific letter. So you see that it's got an M, so that goes up the top. So there we go. Top ring's on, about 120 degrees away from the second ring groove, and that's the rings on. Now to put the rod on. You see on the face of the piston we've got an arrow now that arrow goes to the front of the engine so if we put it upside down remember that is over to the right hand side and then these rods here that marking goes to the front also so that's how the rod goes in like that so what we do first of all is we put a circlip in one side of the piston so 
you see we've got a circlip in one side of the piston. We put the pin lubricated in one side with the bit sticking out the middle. Lubricate the small end bush and then we put the rod in and just feed the pin through the small end. Bit difficult with one arm. And then we turn it over to the side where it hasn't got the circlip in. Now what we do is we insert the, the circlip into that groove now. So we've got both circlips in guys. We've got one shell in the base of the rod, obviously making sure that the rod housing is clean before you put the bearing in and dry. Do not lubricate the housing or the back of the bearing. And we put a layer of lubricant onto the bearing and we put the ring clamp on. Now the ring clamp compressor obviously compresses the rings. Um, we need to put about half inch um, of skirt showing out the bottom um, to just locate into the bore. And then what we'll do is we'll go over and show you how we put the piston down the hole. So what we do, ensuring that the arrow is facing to the front and the block is upright. So the reason for the block being upright is so that the rod sort of dangles in the right area to slide over the, um, the crankshaft. So that's sitting there now nice and flat. Then what we do is we just tap around the ring compressor, ensuring that the ring compressor sits on the block all the way round. And then we just literally tap gently down on the piston crown, very gently all the way around. So the, if it comes to a halt and doesn't want to go any further, it means that something's gone wrong with the rings. Maybe a ring's popped out or something like that, but it's just nice and gently. There should be no force needed really. And then, um, and then that is in guys. Now what we've got to do is turn the block over, put the cap on the other side, making sure the cap goes on the right way. Um, and then obviously the same with the bearing in lubricated and then we just do the, uh, do the bolts up, job done. But what we do is every time we put a piston in, we turn the block over and put the cap on. So that ensures that we don't get confused with the cats and put the wrong cap on the wrong rod. So that's it guys, pretty much done. Um, and this thing is ready to go to Dave Asprey. So we've got the Rover V8 block down here, all been honed now. Block faces have been done. It probably is gonna have to have another clean, knowing Paul but that is ready to get back on the engine stand and we can crack on building that as soon as we've got the crank balance all completed and back. Bit of an odd one about the, about the Mercedes, but um, that's it for another week really guys. Um, hopefully the weather's nice and you can all have a nice weekend, but um, until Monday's video, thanks for watching and we'll see you then. Cheers guys.